Hello everyone and welcome back to Space Engineers and today, today we are doing a train episode. Now, this all started with uh, the release of field work and part of the trailer has this huge monorail bringing all the different ship components in and I finally just got a chance to sit around and play with like a couple ideas and concepts that have been festering in my brain. So today I'm going to show you at least some of what I have because today I am focusing on this lovely track I'm riding on a bi rail system, which is what we more traditionally think of when we think of trains. Off in the distance, you can see my uh, little bit. I went a little crazy and, you know, with the monorail testing, but that will be its own video because while they are similar, there are some differences in how you set those up. So for today, we're focusing on the by rails and I'm going to show you how to set up the tracks, how to do the turns, how to change your elevation. Let's go ahead, and get started. And now we are down here on the ice field. So I'm going to show you how to set up the tracks themselves. Now, there are a couple different ways we can do this. And it really depends on kind of what your use case is. If you're like on a relatively flat plane, with no changes in elevation, you can get away with this first method. And that is just by placing the blocks directly on the ground. There is a couple things you gotta kinda do differently. And that is, you simply just take an armor block. You wanna make sure it's aligned to gravity. And if you're on PC, you just hit the B key till it says gravity align mode, place mode. You're gonna stick that block about halfway down. And then you are gonna use full beam blocks setting them up like that and then you're going to continue for however long this track is and that's just going to be like if you want a track ground level now if you don't and you don't want to sit here and have to like do some weird stuff with like elevation changes we can do this next way which is my preferred way of doing it and it starts off with us still placing some armor blocks down, except we're going to elevate it by like three or four blocks. In this case, I'll just do three. So we're going to start off by placing our block down, still aligned with gravity. We're going to go up three blocks. I want to build like some support wings. You can kind of use whatever blocks you want on this. I'm just using these two by one slopes. And then once that's done, rather than a full block, you're going to do a half block. Do, 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 right there. And you're going to sit here and run that however long you want your sections. I usually do mine probably about 20 blocks out. And I do also suggest, you know, kind of adding detail. Maybe like catwalks down the middle, some armor plates underneath. Anything to kind of help create extra structure is great. Now you could also, rather than these half blocks here, do a track with the full beam blocks like that. It's kind of however you want to do. The big key thing is you want this nice steady groove facing up, whether it's half blocks on top or full blocks kind of attached to the sides. However you want to do it, that's entirely up to your preference. So once you kind of get the track going, how do you make your turns? Well, it's actually a lot simpler than it may seem. So to do the turning, we need to build the support like we did for our elevated tracks because you want the tracks elevated for this. Now you can do less than three blocks, but I'm gonna kind of continue upwards with the three blocks and build our little support team. Now, what we do from here is we will need a hinge block and the orientation doesn't matter it's just so long as it's horizontal for turns. You're gonna place that down and you're, then you're gonna place a rotor. Now. I highly suggest before you do anything like I just did, please make sure your grid is powered. 
it gets a little wonky and well things don't like to work when it's not powered or at least lock your stuff down just saves you headaches later so from here once we got the rotor placed we're going to go back to armor blocks and we are going to build up by two and then we are going to build our little support t here now you'll notice something is I can't actually attach this one to the ground. And the reason why it doesn't want to do that is because while our initial one is a station, it's a fixed structure, because this is attached via subgrids, it is considered a ship. We will be fixing this before the end of it. So once we get this all set up, the next thing we want to do to make everything work is we will need some connectors. So you're gonna take two connectors facing each other. So they look just like that. And then from here, you just add your tracks. Now I would usually do kind of groups of three. So this first pillar will have three tracks. Come on. And this back half is going to have three tracks. And the reason why I do three is one, obviously the ones closest to each other are going to be like your transition pieces. Two, it's going to be the ones that are attached to the support beam itself. Now we could do things like I mentioned, like adding detail, such as you can throw some armor blocks right here. And now those are now tied into the structure. And then three with these end ones, what I am doing is I'm creating just something that's easy. If we're copying and pasting this into another world, it makes it easier to attach them. I don't know why. It just seems like it's easier to get the connections to work properly. But once this is done, all we need to do is really just kind of set our degrees that we want to turn. Now, with turning, you kind of want to stay somewhere between one to three degrees of change. Anything above three, it's considered a sharp turn and you're more than likely going to derail or your likelihood of derailing your train increases. And this is kind of backed up because many of the railroads you see here in America usually have like a one to three degree curve. At least this is from my quick searching on Google. I'm not a train railroad engineer so i don't actually know also i feel like railroad engineer would be wrong because i believe that's also what they call the train conductors that let's ignore that for now i don't design railroad this is just from a quick google search most curves typically are between one and three degrees so what we're going to do is i'm going to use just build vision to change these to a negative three and a positive three. Now, once that is set, we are going to change our directions. And I highly suggest just kind of like playing around with what is comfortable. Really on the turns, you can be a little bit more aggressive than you can with elevation, but you really still want to stick between that one and three degrees, but whatever works for you, is awesome. I do suggest, though, the faster you plan on going, the lower the degree of change. That's the only uh, thing I'm going to mention on that. Once our hinge is set, we're going to go to our rotor and using rotor displacement, we're going to just bring that rotor in till the inside corner is just barely touching or even if there's like a little gap. 
And now that is our turn. We notice there's still kind of a gap here. We can fix that by kind of switching this down to like a one degree. And as you can notice, we because of that, we can bring this in more. So aesthetically, the smaller degree changes also look nicer. Is that to me, it's just a lot nicer and it actually does travel smoother. But once you kind of figure out what you like and what you're done playing around with, you're going to go to your connector and you are going to lock your connectors. Now, these are all connected. You can uh, go to the section that was designated a ship. Go into your info tab on the K menu. You can now convert that section into a station. Which now means you can sit here. Attach that to the ground. You can go in and delete this. If you want, you don't even need the connectors. And there you go. You now have railroad tracks. Now, if you are, let's say, copying and pasting this in, I would keep the connectors connected. And then I would just, you know, copy and paste in that section and then just keep attaching it. That's what I did for uh, the railroad track that I tested is I just made a section and then kept them connected via connectors, copy and pasted them in. So now that that's done, how do you sit here and make elevation changes? That can't be too difficult, can it? Answer is no. Give me one quick sec. I'm going to show you because it will look very familiar. And now we're back with the changes in elevation. Now, Gillis looks really familiar. If you had already seen the part of the video that does the turning, it's the exact same thing. The only difference is our hinge is now rotated to the vertical orientation. Now, in the sense, these are changing elevations and changing our direction are both the same in how we do it. I'm going to come into here. I'm going to set my angles. In this case, I'm going to do 1%. And then I'm going to get that turned up. And then before I lock them in, I'm going to fix my rotor displacement just to where they're touching. Lock that on. Yep. Oh, why are we not? Are you? Oh, I had turned that off. All right. Lock that on and... Convert this section to station. And then clean up. Now, where this differs is with the rotations for the turning, especially if you're copying and pasting in, you can use just this one blueprint. Elevation, you're going to want to create a blueprint for a upwards elevation change and a downward elevation change just because of how copying and pasting actually work. Now to kind of a little word when it comes to many of these, much like how changes and like the direction of the rails are usually small, you know, one to 3% elevation, a 5% angle change in elevation is huge like one of the steepest grades in america is like only five percent 
we're gonna do a 1%. And over here, I'm gonna show you kind of like how that looks. So this contraption right here is at a 1%. And it starts off three blocks with our beams right on top. However, over the span of 100 blocks, we increase by one, two, three. So that's our starting point. So one by two full block lengths. Now that doesn't seem like much, but you do that over a large enough distance. It's with enough, you know, lead way, you'll get taller than some of these mountains. Now you could also increase your angle to like, I'd say safely like 3%, but nothing much higher than that. So just kind of a nice little uh, thing to note when you're ch talking about elevation changes is uh, keep, them, keep them much smaller than you actually think. Now that I've shown you how to do the turns and how to do elevation, let's talk about something I do want to address. And that is, hey, what happens if I get a twist in the track? Because it's going to happen. Well, the nice thing about using a rotor in our tracks is if we need to adjust the angle at, that we are at, we can just use the rotor block itself to make those adjustments. So even adjusting for rotation, that's how you would do that. With all of that said and done, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you enjoyed me, I would very much appreciate a subscribe. And if you feel like helping out the channel, while it's not required, I have many different ways you can do that. You can just check the links down below, check out my merch shop, check out uh, my Discord. A lot of things, kind of different ways you can help show your support. While none of it is necessary, what is necessary is that you enjoyed the video today. And if you feel like there's things that I could be doing to kind of help you with that, let me know. I take constructive criticism very well. So help me help you out. And if you have any extra tips, uh, kind of tips or tricks, any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. Until next time, I'm the Kilted Bastard. Have a great rest of your night.